morning and welcome to our service on this Palm Sunday, a uh, day uh, when we remain, remember the, the joyful entry into uh, Jerusalem of, of Jesus. And so we begin our service this morning and we do say welcome to those of you that join us online by singing hymn number 108 in the hymn book. Hymn number 108. Myself, 
that they too may be consecrated by the truth. Beloved in Christ, we've come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Mark 7 and verse 21 to 23. For from within, from out of men's hearts, come evil thoughts sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, <coughs> envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and make a man. And in Romans 13, and verse 23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. On this cusp of Holy Week, we're so mindful of what Jesus did for us on the cross. And we pray together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, in verse 19, we read that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sin against them, and he has committed to us the message of rebel, of reconciliation. In Galatians 2 and verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ Jesus lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Thanks be to God for what his Son has done. Let's stand together as we share together in the verticals and responses on page 103. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Do that together in the words of Psalm 118 uh, that reflects our, our delight in being saved. Uh, and the refrain is, I will give thanks to you for you have become my salvation. Let's share together in Psalm 118. I, I, I will give thanks to you for you have become my salvation. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. 
This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. O come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord, send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is good. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you, for you have become my salvation. Save me, God, open the gates of righteousness, that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 50 verses 4 to 9. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They all will wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. The epistle is taken from Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that was above every name, that of the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And the New Testament reading is taken from John chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. The next day the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and they went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you Nigel. We now turn to our hymn books and the, the hymn is hymn number 238. Right on, right on in majesty.
In the name of the one true God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the words from my mouth be placed upon the hearts of those who hear them. Amen. Amen. And you know the story of Beauty and the Beast. Perhaps you've seen the Disney film with its marvellous comic characters. Underlying the comedy, though, is an intense, serious love story. Beauty is a lovely young girl whose beloved old father gets lost one night and is, is captive and held prisoner in the sinister castle. After the vain attempt to rescue him, Beauty offers herself in his place. She discovers that the castle belongs to a hideous beast whose guest she is to be. At first, she is horrified and repelled. But as time goes on, she begins to appreciate the qualities of the character beneath the horrific appearance. When a rescue party comes and injures the beast, beauty is distraught. Thinking that the beast is dying, she kisses him and declares her love. At that, the beast turns into a handsome prince he has really been all along. Beauty's love has restored him to a lovable form. At its simplest level, the story illustrates the truth that appearances may be deceptive. More profoundly, it encourages us to understand that the deepest love, the deepest truth, is not on the surface but is only revealed through struggle and despair. Palm Sunday tells us a story about a surface view of reality, but it begins a week in which the deeper truth is gradually revealed through struggle and despair. Today, Palm Sunday begins the most important week of the Christian year for us, Holy Week. And it's a day of glory and also a pending tragedy. The two aspects are inextricably bound together, overshadowing the splendour and joy of acceptance of Christ as a Messiah and King. Is the darkness of tragedy with the threat of death to come. The hosannas of joy and the greeting from the crowd within a matter of days will become more jeers and calls for his execution. <coughs> the palms which are held high and sentenced into the holy city will all too soon to shape themselves in the crosses of pain and sorrow. Amidst the plaudits and songs of joy of the crowd, their proclaimed king rides in on in sadness, and the Messiah they hail is in tears as he makes his triumphant journey down from Bethany into the city. The sight of Jerusalem in the distance, in all of its loveliness, makes the tears well up in the eyes of Jesus, because he knows that soon all the beauty will be swept away in ruins. In that famous city, which for centuries had been the centre of worship, for God's own people. He, the Holy One of God, the long-awaited King of Israel, was to meet his crucified death. It was a sinful, it was a tearful Messiah who rode on a donkey amid the acclamations of the multitude on that spring day in Palestine, riding on to meet his destiny. Can you imagine what it must have been like in Jerusalem in the days surrounding Jesus' crucifixion? On Palm Sunday, he had been welcomed into that city, <coughs> ushered in with a great fanfare. And though Jesus may have been riding on a humble donkey, the crowds greeted him as their king. They walked with him. They threw palm branches in his path. They shouted their approval. At least they would have a leader to occupy the throne of Israel who would be a powerful voice 
in dealing with other tribes and other nations. This man of God, who has healing powers, his promise of equality, his promise of justice for all people, was an answer to their prayer. But that was not why Jesus had come. That was not his mission. And as the crowds began to realise this, the cheering stopped. First came disappointment, and then came intense anger. A palm carpeted passageway leading to a royal throne became a desolate path to a cross and his execution. On this Palm Sunday, we are asked to look at that suffering, the suffering of God upon a cross. What we have felt had we been amongst those crowds in Jerusalem. <coughs> Try and imagine yourself there, and remember that you would have known nothing about the resurrection nor the powerful coming of the Holy Spirit. Surely we would have been caught up in the events. We would have been there cheering, shouting and waving palm branches. This Galilean who had spoken with authority, healed so many and called God his father, had come riding into the city amid shouts of acclamation. Would he be Israel's king? Would he overthrow Rome? Would the son of David follow David's star and succeed? We would have strewn branches in his path and we would have shouted out our support. We would have joined in the celebrations with the best of them, because that is so much what we would all have wanted. Salvation. We could identify him and understand. Salvation in our own lives. Now, freedom from oppression, freedom from poverty, and freedom from injustice. And it seemed that that was something that Jesus could have and would have made possible. But look a little closer, because Jesus didn't come dressed as a warrior. He came dressed in peace, with no weapons or no powerful means to overthrow the Romans. But a few days later, how different a picture. This man who carried the unrealistic hopes of the Jewish nation stands alone, marked by scourging, mocked by a crown of thorns and a purple robe. There is nothing dignified about his death. Everything was as bad as it could possibly be, or even worse. Like the rest of the crowd, we would have felt hurt and we would have felt angry. We too would join with those calling for his death because he had not succeeded. In fact, he had let us die. If there was to be no kingdom for Israel, then he should be killed. He had failed. It is not just the fact that he may or may not be suffering unjustly, paying the price for something he has not done. It is also that in him, our dreams and our hopes have been realized and have been shattered. It has all gone very, very wrong. Surely you can understand why the crowd called for his crucifixion. But let us not jump ahead to the resurrection just yet, but stay with that failure, for it is part of our experience. We fail so often. We cannot meet the demands we make upon ourselves. We resolve and then we cannot keep our resolutions. We put our hopes in ventures that collapse, in people we may disappoint us. We make things that do not work. We fail other people's expectations. We even fail our faith, and we fear that our faith fails us, or we feel that God fails us. Our prayers seem unanswered, and it feels that nothing makes sense. Nothing holds together. But in all of this, Christ has been there before us. His experience of failure was so intense that he felt utterly abandoned. 
even by God. He knew the very depth of loneliness and isolation. He knew darkness. He knew dereliction. And in experiencing, it made it redemptive. Holy Week is hard work. It is hard for us who live after the res resurrection to enter into despair and defeat and humiliation and understand its reality. But the church's keeping of Holy Week is an invitation to do just that. The clouds with the palms think they understand, but they know nothing. Only when death is looked squarely in the face, in the reality of the kingdom of God, we really know. There is more than a week between Palm Sunday and Easter Day. There is a whole lifetime from hope to despair, from despair to death, and from, despair, and from death to life. There's a long journey ahead of us this week as we pack the palms away and set out on the stony road to the cross and beyond. So as we remember Christ's passion, let us bring to the Father the world for which Christ died, secure in the knowledge of his love. And we pray for the church as it lives again the drama of Holy Week and seeks again to express the deep truth of a love and a life that is stronger than death. Amen. Hymn number one hundred and twenty. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, save the King. And grant his government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. And let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And let, let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Church's prayer for Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create to make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in our prayers of intercession today, we pray for God's church throughout the world. We pray for the world. We pray for communities from which, uh, to which we belong, and we pray for the bereaved and those who are sick. And so we pray. Lord of your people, we ask you to strengthen your church in all the world. We remember the link missionaries that we support in India. Uh, we also remember the quills uh, who have just gone out to Sudan and as we remember them we thank you Father for uh, our Sunday school and uh, drawing uh, our attention to them as, uh, as they seek to minister to the people in Sudan. And Father as we pray for the church throughout the world we particularly uh, as we enter Holy Week think on the holy city of Jerusalem we think on all the Christian churches there as uh, they uh, would have uh, many services in this week uh, leading into Easter as they and we remember the, the life and the death of uh, your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Father, we pray your protection on all those church services as those people come to worship. We particularly, Father, uh, pray uh, for protection on uh, those Christians worshipping in the Holy Land at this time. And as we ask your protection upon them, we thank you, Father, for their outreach in that region. We thank you for the light that they shine uh, of your love. And Father, as we remember them, we also remember uh, how they reach out through hospitals and schools to provide for, for people uh, in that area. And Lord, as we pray for them, we also pray for um, the church to which we belong, our denomination uh, here in uh, Northern Ireland. We pray for the Church of Ireland. We particularly pray for our neighbouring parishes in Lisburn and our own parish here. And we ask, Lord, that you bless our bishop and you would build us up in faith and love. In these very difficult times, uh, we pray, Father, that your gospel, uh, the gospel of the good news of your Son, uh, would reach out to bring healing in our land. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And Lord of all creation, we look, we ask you to look with favor on the world that you have made. We ask you to guide the nations in the ways of justice and of peace. And Father, as we look out into the world, um, as we hear it uh, coming into our homes, and we are very, very aware of all that is going on, uh, the recent events in Moscow in the last uh, 24, 48 hours, uh, the terrible terrorist atrocity there. Uh, we're mindful of all the shipping uh, trying to get up uh, through the Suez Canal, uh, bringing goods uh, to people throughout uh, Europe and the, the, the issues there, um, the Houthi people. Uh, we also remember the people of Gaza, the West Bank and Israel and uh, Ukraine, all these places where there is ongoing conflict uh, and we ask, Father, that you would indeed uh, guide those who have and can exercise power and uh, guide them into the ways of justice and of peace. In what feels to be an increasingly insecure world, we ask, Father, uh, that you would uh, raise up people who will promote and advance the cause of justice and of peace. Lord, in your mercy, here our prayer. And Father, as uh, we gather here, uh, as church family here, uh, we thank you, Father, for our Sunday school and our jam group. We thank you also for those that are preparing for confirmation at this time. Uh, we remember Adam, Jack, Annabel, Ella, Rose, Olivia, Harry, and Emily. And we pray, Father, you'd be with them as uh, they continue that preparation. Uh, and uh, Lord, we thank you that you bless us with children and young people in our midst on a Sunday morning. We thank you, Father, for those who, who care for them and teach them, uh, our, our team of Sunday school leaders. And Lord, we ask that you would bless them and enrich the relationships there. And we ask you, Lord, to bless that group of people and those young children, uh, that they would come ever closer uh, to knowing you as their Lord and Saviour, and uh, that it will go out into the world as young lights uh, to shine. Father, as we pray for them, we also um, pray, remembering that uh, our children are breaking up for Easter holidays. Uh, many will travel, many will take time uh, away from, from Lisbon for holidays. We ask your protection upon them as they travel. Uh, we ask you, Father, for refreshing times for them as and their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we also pray for those who are sick at this time uh, in our church congregation. Uh, we remember those um, who are in hospital, uh, those in nursing homes. Uh, we remember our church warden, Ismi. We pray, Father, for her continued recovery. Uh, uh, build her up day by day. And we thank you, Father, for her service to us here in church. And in the quietness of our hearts now, let's bring before God those whom we know who are sick uh, or suffering and need healing at this time. we have prayed for those known to us personally at a local level here. We also remember our royal family, uh, we remember our king, and we remember um, the Princess of Wales. Um, we pray, Father, for your healing and your strength uh, for them. We also pray for the end of all the intrusion into their private lives. Uh, that has been going on and that I am sure and we are sure has added to the distress of the illnesses that both of them are suffering. And so Father we pray for greater understanding amongst the people of our land, uh, amongst ourselves as we pray for their healing. Lord in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And Father we remember those who have been bereaved and uh, we appreciate that every day in the year will be for some family a 
time when they remember a loved one. And uh, we particularly remember those who have been recently bereaved. We remember the family of Maureen Gordon, uh, Marjorie McLeod, uh, Jean Kerr and Bob Coburn. Draw up close to them in this time. They know, may know your strength, um, your peace and assurance of the hope uh, that is the Christian gospel and uh, that they will indeed meet again. And now let's take a moment of silence as we remember uh, for ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And merciful Father, we ask you to accept all these our prayers which we offer up to you in the name of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you know, as, as we all know, prayer is a wonderful way uh, to convey our needs to God. And uh, there is so much going on in our world uh, beyond what we can even manage, what's going on in our own lives. And God wants to hear it all, so I'd encourage you, keep praying. Uh, God will bring healing into the difficult and challenging personal circumstances we have. And as we look out into the world, uh, to all that seems so insecure and uh, uh, at this time. Let's now uh, turn to our final hymn today, which is 134. This is our, our offering hymn, and while I'm mentioning our offering hymn, I'm actually quite conscious because just as I said to you, people were saying to me about uh, making a contribution to the coffee morning yesterday, and uh, rather than me, because people were literally giving me money rather than my pockets, <laughs> I suggested a plate in the, the porch. Uh, also, some folk are bringing in the, the little square missionary boxes that uh, Sunday school suggested we would uh, put out uh, into the congregation way back at the start of February with a view to returning them for Easter Sunday. So can I just encourage you to return those uh, little missionary boxes? Uh, I, I, I think, uh, Jackie, you were struggling this morning, weren't you, with the weight of the coins uh, that you were bringing into the church hall uh, from some of the children that had uh, managed to, to gather up uh, through friends and family. So, uh, and that, that is all going to support the, the, the missionaries that I mentioned in our prayers, uh, Andrew and Joanne Quill, who have just headed out to uh, Sudan. Uh, so thank you for that on their behalf. Let's uh, turn now to our final hymn, which is uh, Make Way, Make Way for Christ the King, 134. <laughs>
we head out into God's world to be his servants. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.